Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're continuing the Ansible series. We're going to get on to our first basic tasks and commands. So by the end of this video you'll be able to use your existing remote connections to your virtual machines or physical machines and you'll be able to do some simple things like pulling updates and applying them to the machine. I'll do that by going through all the steps of the installation playbook and I'll also cover how to become the root user because many of the commands that we'll want to use in the future will require root privileges. So let's now jump straight into a walkthrough of a basic script. So now back on my Ansible virtual machine, I'm gonna create a new folder within the home directory. And I'm just doing that to keep this simple for this video. You can obviously create whatever folder structure you want. So I'm gonna hit new folder and I'm just gonna call this Ansible test. And within Ansible test, I'm gonna put the following file. So I'm gonna right click a new file and I'm just gonna call this one playbook dash update dot yaml and in here i'm going to paste the following which is something that i've used previously in testing so to begin with hopefully it's self-explanatory we want to specify the hosts that this playbook will apply to and if you remember in my previous video i specified in the square brackets a set of hosts called docker it was actually just one machine which is my docker machine and you could replicate this for multiple servers or you could do something like all. So it's going to target all machines that are in your inventory file. So feel free to tweak this to whatever suits your purpose. I'm going to put it to all just because I've only specified one machine on there. Next, we're going to become true and become user root. What does that mean? Well, that's where it's telling Ansible to run these commands. Everything else that's coming up later in this tasks subsection, you'll notice the indentation here. It's going to say to perform all of these actions as the root user. Why is that? Well, quite simply because to do an update of the cache and to install updates, you need to be a root user. In this instance, my root user is root, so that's what I'm going to become. When it does that, it's gonna ask me for a password. And we'll see that later in the video when I execute this playbook. Next, we get on to what the actual commands are. So this one is called update the apt repo and the cache on all Debian Ubuntu boxes. Pretty self-explanatory, right? And what it's gonna do is say, update the cache, yes. It's gonna force it, yes. And the cache time is only valid for one hour. So if you were to rerun this playbook and it's within one hour, it wouldn't go and check because it's within that confine. If it's an hour and a minute when you run this playbook, it will then go and refresh the repositories. Next, it's gonna actually do the upgrade for all of the packages. So if you remember the first bit, it's gonna check and pull down the latest repos. And then in the next bit, it's actually gonna perform it if there's a difference between the installed version and the one that's available. Next is quite handy, it's going to check whether a reboot is required. You'll know that many times when you want to do an upgrade on Linux, it will flash up and say that a kernel update is available and to apply that you're going to need to perform a reboot. This checks for a file that's on there, so what will it do? It checks whether this file exists or not. If that file exists, it means that it needs a reboot. So in the next section, we've got another task called reboot the box if the kernel is updated. It's going to send a message to say that the reboot is initiated by Ansible for kernel updates. It's going to have some specified timeouts that are in there that are kind of feasible. You could obviously tweak this to whatever task you're doing. Remember, things like this, all of the things I'm showing you today, you can take these and add them to other tasks should you need them. I'm simply showing you what it's capable of and giving you some examples of what you can define. And the important bit here is we've got a when clause. So a bit like any scripting programming language, we need to execute something when something is true. So firstly, this task is gonna create this here to check. And then at the bottom, actually during the reboot, it's gonna say, well, if this file does exist, then perform this action. So hopefully now when I execute this playbook, it should refresh the repos. It should then check and update 
And then if all that's successful, and if it needs a reboot, it will then go and do that. Now that we've gone through the playbook, we're getting close to the exciting part. And I say close because there's always one more thing, right? Well, what we need to do now is jump back into our host's file. And the clue is at the top here. Where it says become true and become user root, we need to actually put some specific values within our configuration variables file within Ansible. We do that within the host folder and it's gonna say how we become root. So let me show you. So jumping back into the hosts file, we need to add the following. We need to add a variables section. So the variables section to make this work looks like this. We have an all variables, so it's gonna to apply to everything in here. We're gonna say that the Ansible user is Ubuntu, like we've been using, the user on my Docker host is Ubuntu. We're gonna say Ansible become yes, and we want the method to be sudo, which is probably something you're very familiar with, especially if you've been following my videos or you've done anything that's gonna require administrative privileges. So we're gonna hit Control O and save that, and now we can exit it. Now that we've edited the host's file, we need to make one last change to the playbook. That's because we've already specified this within the host file and we set it to be Ubuntu. So we want to become Ubuntu, but we want to become pseudo Ubuntu. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to delete this line and I'm going to save this file. And now we can get onto the actual command to run this playbook. So the command we need to use is Ansible playbook. Previously, we've just used Ansible. This instructs the write Ansible binary to run a playbook. Then we want to specify which playbook we want to use. And as you can see, playbook update is this one here that we've just gone through. Next, we want to specify the key file. So for that SSH connection as described in the previous video. And on top of this, before I run it, I've also got the output from this virtual machine. So when I run this command now, we won't see the update process taking place in this terminal, I don't think anyway. But if it does require a reboot, I don't know if it does, we should see it reboot and we'll get that confirmation in this screen. So with any luck, I should be able to now run this command, it should start running, and hopefully we'll see some output. Regardless, I will go over this again and we'll go through everything that Ansible puts out in the terminal. So if we run this now, oh dear, we've got an error. Now that didn't work and you'll see why. It says it's missing the sudo password and that's kind of what you would expect, right? We haven't specified the password for the sudo anywhere. So how would we expect this to be able to escalate privilege? Now, how do we fix that? Well, we fix that by adding the following tag to the end of this command, ask become pass. So become true, we're gonna ask, well, what's the password to do this? So now hopefully when I hit return, become password. So I'm gonna put in my password for this machine and hopefully with any luck, it can now execute. So now it's going away, it's connected, and hopefully it's gonna update those repositories. There we go, changed, that's looking positive. It's now going away and upgrading. So fingers crossed this won't take too long, but you know the sorrow story of my internet. That's hopefully getting fixed soon, and I've got a cool set of videos planned for that. It's gonna be interesting because I'm getting two gig internet. Most of my infrastructure is one gig, so as you can imagine, a bit of hardware needed. Anyway, I'm gonna rush ahead now because this is gonna take a while and anything that's gonna update, I'll skip ahead to that part and we'll have a full walkthrough regardless after this has taken place. So now that's happened and bingo, you can see that it requires a reboot. So we know that this is working. We can also see that we've got green here that says check if it's rebooting and it's done that. So now that's restarting and hopefully this script should finish and it should come back and say all of the things that took place. So now you can see I'm back at the login page on my Docker host. Don't worry if you can't see it, it's just the standard login. And if we actually come back to the important bit now, which is the terminal, let's have a look what it said at the end of that. Well, it did the playbook. 
it did the gathering facts. As you know, that's the bit where it queries what needs to happen on the machine first. It then said it changed on the task to update the repo. So anything that says changed in yellow means that it changed. It did something basically. If it didn't do anything, it would skip over it. Then it did an upgrade and it said again, changed. So it did something. It did the upgrade. It then did a check to see whether the file was there, in which case green, it was there. So then it performed the task of, remember it had that when condition. So the file was there, so do a reboot when that file exists, and therefore we got another change. We also got five OKs, so five tasks completed successfully, three of which had that change. So that's these ones here in the yellow. Nothing failed. And now that machine has rebooted and everything is up to date. Excellent. And obviously now you could take this, you could change your hosts file and you could put in all of the different hosts that you want this to apply to. Now, it's probably a good idea to think about what you're rebooting. You don't necessarily just want to go and reboot everything. For instance, something like a Docker Swarm or a Kubernetes cluster, you don't want to go and reboot the whole thing at the same time. That's going to cause problems. What you would want to do is building some logic. And we'll come on to that in later videos where we'd want to have some conditions. So we go through perhaps one at a time. We would do things like draining the nodes, cordoning them off, then doing the update and the reboot. And then only when that virtual machine is back up, we've uncordoned it, we've taken off the drain, and we've allowed it to fill with pods, we would then move on to the next machine. That would mean that our cluster stays healthy, but also gives us a systematic way of updating the entire cluster. So do have a think before you go and run this on your estate and just plug in every machine. You could run into some issues. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found that useful. Now, there will be some of you that says, why don't you use some of the Ansible built-in plugins, which you can do for apt, and I will also share those on my GitHub. You can use those if you want. They do pretty much the same thing. And with Ansible, there's probably a million different ways, a bit like a programming language, to do the same thing. This is how I've done it. This is how I've learned it, and hopefully you understand the steps. The key thing about this whole video series is that you understand and become familiar with Ansible, there's no right or wrong way to do things most of the time, and often as well, the documentation will change over time. Do let me know if there is something that you use which is better, more performant, more correct, more secure. Feel free to put a PR in and I'll have a check and look at that. Anyway, thanks for watching as always, guys. Hit that thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.